Hey guys, today we're going to teach you how to get your first dip. Dips are obviously really great for growing your chest, as well as targeting your triceps. Let's get straight into it. The way I'm going to teach you how to do this is through five simple steps. Make sure you pay attention to each step, because I'm going to give you goals before you move on to the next one. Now for phase one, I want you to use this exercise to build up your general strength. Now if you have a good amount of strength, that's okay. You can still do this exercise, it's still going to benefit you. So the exercise that we're going to get you to do is seated bench dips. Seated bench dips are going to help you strengthen your triceps and also your shoulders as well. It helps you get familiar with the range of motion that your shoulders need to move into. When you're doing this exercise, you can use anything that has a flat surface, including chairs at home. I'm sure you have chairs at home, right? To do this exercise, and this is also good advice moving forward to the next step as well, is to make sure your hands are about hip width apart or shoulder width apart. My favorite cue for this one is to sit on your thumbs and then wrap them around the surface. This way you don't put so much pain on your thumb joint if you were to wrap it on top of the surface. I like to make sure that I have the cue of having the back of your shirt grazing the chair. Now I'm going to go through all the mistakes that most people have towards the end, so make sure you watch till then. But with this exercise here, we want to make sure we can aim for somewhere between 3 sets of 15 to 20 reps pretty comfortably. Then you're ready for the next step. Now phase 2 is going to be focusing on still strengthening those triceps. But how do we make it harder? We want to make it harder by using gravity. And this means we can either straighten your legs completely straight to be making the exercise harder or you can support them above something as well like another chair. Hopefully you have two chairs. When we're doing this exercise we still want to practice full range of motion. With this one here I want you to hit three sets of 10 to 12 reps with good technique and good form. Now you might be stuck in phase two and in phase three for a little while. This is where we start to practice a little bit of each. So in phase three we're going to get you familiar with actually doing parallel bar dips but just the hold position. I want you to get used to supporting all your weight through your wrist joints and stacking everything in line as well. Just getting familiar with your surroundings. This means we want to stack the wrist, the elbow and the shoulders on top of each other and also want to give yourself some sad shoulders. What I mean by that is you want to push them downwards. We call this shoulder depression, hence why sad shoulders. I want you to hold this for up to 20 to 30 seconds and this is honestly going to be quite a quick phase for most people because you're already used to holding some of your body weight through this position. Now if you don't have dips, you can use anything that says even surface. What I'm using here are parallel bar dips which I purchased from Base Blocks and you can use my code if you want to get yourself a pair but you can actually get them from any of your fitness stores and including Amazon as well. I've put the links in the description box below if you, if you feel like you're uncertain about what you think you need and the ones that I recommend. Now let's move on to phase four. In phase four now, we're gonna need some sort of surface to be able to do your parallel bar dips as well as resistance bands. And we're gonna wrap this around and underneath our wrists and under our ankles or under our feet. When you're doing this, the thicker band obviously will give more pressure and make the exercise easier. Whereas the lighter band or the thinner band will make this exercise a little bit harder. So use this into your own discretion and how you're going to get this exercise to meet the requirements for this phase. With this phase and phase four, I want you to try and hit three sets of 10 to 12 reps as well. This is going to be a great practice to make sure you can find your placement, which we're going to go through towards the end. So make sure you stick till then. Now, if I'm being absolutely honest, by now you should know if you can do your first dip. Phase five is all about taking that leap of faith. If you can do three sets of 10 to 12 with a light resistance band, I have complete faith that you have an attempt or at least a chance to be able to get this without a band and get your first dip. Now, let's go into some of the errors that most people make when they're practicing for their first dip. The first thing that we wanna go through is the most common error when it comes to exercises in general is not going to full range of motion. Now, don't get me wrong, when you're starting off with a new exercise, it's good to practice partials. But if you don't eventually try and push into full range of motion, you become used to that and it becomes a bad habit that you have to untrain and take steps back. So no matter what you do, make sure you practice full range of motion as I'm showing right now. 
Now the second mistake that I see is common across all five stages, especially when it comes to the elbows flaring. With the elbows, we don't want them to flare too far out. This puts far too much strain on your elbows and also recruits the wrong muscles. Not only that, it puts your joints in a very unfamiliar position when it's flared too much. This can cause irritation and of course injury as well. And you can't practice your dips if you're injured. So just be aware, when we're doing this exercise, I want to make sure that your elbows are coming almost close towards you, like train tracks. If you're going to have a little bit of a flare, and this depends on each person's measurements, it's going to be very, very minor. Just don't let it be too excessive, and you're going to have to find out what's too much when what's too little. But just make sure you make those changes very slightly so that your body can adjust. The last and most common mistake that I see when people are trying to practice for their dips is where they lean forward. Leaning too far forward can put too much pressure on your chest, and if you do not have the strength for it, you're gonna feel pretty uncomfortable. Now leaning too far back, that's gonna put a lot of stress onto your elbows and not exactly the muscle itself, the triceps. So I want you to try and focus somewhere between the two. Keep the exercise quite neutral between the two joints of the triceps and the chest. Now, once you have gotten your first dip, you can start leaning slightly forward and this is gonna target your chest a lot more and you will start to see the benefits of this. So if you really enjoyed this exercise tutorial, you're gonna like this next one as well, where we teach you how to target your upper body effectively, especially for those of you out there who wanna focus on this. So click that video and I'll see you there.